Okay, Assalamualaikum. Uh, so here is the topic for the assignment: investigation, the effect of electromagnetic interference due to radiation emission. What is radiated emission? In the field of EMC, the term radiated emission refers to the unintentional release of electromagnetic energy from an electronic device or apparatus. Any electronic device may generate electromagnetic fields that unintentionally propagate away from the device structure. In general, radiated emission are usually associated with non-intentional radiators, but intentional uh, radiators can also have unwanted emissions at frequencies outside their intended transmission frequency band. Radiated emission effect. So, uh, radiated emission here. Radiated emission refers to the unintentional release of electromagnetic energy into the surrounding environment from an electronic device or system. This electromagnetic energy can manifest as radio frequency signals and can potentially, potentially interfere with other electro, electronic device or systems. The effects of radiated emissions can be detrimental to the proper functioning of nearby electronic equipment leading to electromagnetic interference. Okay, so here is the procedure. Uh, first, figure 4.1 shows an, an, an arrangement of spark voltage measurement for represent, representing EMI or source of radiation emission. The measurement was based on the voltage divider concept where the, the where the divider consists 280 mega ohm and 14 kilo ohm. So here is the figure 4.1. Uh, the arrangement of measure, measuring spark voltage using voltage divider. The second picture is the spark voltage obtained from the oscilloscope. Uh, this is the calculation for the spark voltage. Uh, this spark is uh, 37.2. So, so the first procedure is the connection layout of performing radiation emission is shown in figure 4.2. Next, the setting of the oscilloscope are as follows. The setting rate was in the range of 50 to 100 mega per second. Uh, for the in initial step, uh, the trigger setting mode was set to the single with approximately tens of millivolt. Next, the the spark voltage was set perpendicular to the floor and the position of the EMI source is approximately 0 0.2 to 1 between the antenna and the source and the source. So next four samples have been recorded successfully. Uh, select select the highest peak from the train of pulse. Finally Demonstrate the measurement of conducted emissions, record uh, the sample and analyze the result based on the parameters as depicted in table 4.1. State the type of emission source. Lastly, based on overall results and calculation, discuss the discrepancy of frequency response based on the result in table 4.1. Next, compare the resultant between radiated and conducted emission. Finally, make the conclusion. So, uh, this is the uh, radiated emission result uh, obtained from the data given by lecturers. So, uh, the type of EMI source is spark voltage using voltage divider. So, uh, as we can see, uh, if the distance is increased, uh, the highest amplitude is also increased uh, and how, uh, however its uh, overall pulse duration will be decreased and uh, also the rising time also decrease so as we can see this is the uh, graph for distance of 1.5 meter the next is this is the graph for 
distance of 1 meter Next, this is the graph for distance of 0 0.5 meter and the next is the graph for distance of 0 0.2 meters the next is for the discussion uh, there is a decrease in distance from 1.5 to 0, uh, 0 0.2 meters Generally, uh, at shorter distance, it might expect higher frequency components to be more prominent. The volt per division changes significantly from 200 millivolt to 5000 millivolt. Higher voltage might amplify noise or distort the signal affecting frequency components. Uh, the time per division varies from uh, 20 milliseconds to 50 milliseconds. A shorter time per division might capture higher frequency components but may also increase noise. The rising time decrease uh, decreases from uh, 0 0.1 microsecond to 0 0.01 microseconds uh, as distance decrease. Uh, smaller rising times often indicate higher frequency components in the duration uh, in the signal increases with decreasing distance suggesting a longer signal duration longer pulse duration are associated with lower frequencies the highest uh, the highest amplitude increases significantly from 0.925 volt to 15.08 volt high amplitudes might imply a stronger presence of low frequency components it varies from 0 0.1 microsecond to 0 0.03 microsecond smaller zero crossing times may indicate higher frequency content finally the half full width also decreases with decreasing distance uh, the smaller half width suggests a higher frequency signal comparison between radiated emissions and connected emission this is the result for radiated emissions while well, this is a result for conducted emission. What can be compared between these two emissions is firstly is rising time with 10% to 90% of peak. The rising time which is radiated range from 0 0.009 microsecond to 0 0.1 microsecond while in the conducted it range from 83.34 microsecond to 335 microsecond. This indicates the difference in the speed of signal transition between the two data sets. With the radiated data generally showing faster rising times compared to the conducted data. Second is overall pulse duration. Radiated data generally exhibit longer pulse duration compared to the conducted data. Conducted data. This shows that the duration of signal activity varies across the two database data sets with the related data having longer activity periods. Third is the highest amplitude. The related data shows higher in peak amplitudes compared to the conducted, the conducted data. This demonstrates that the signal strength varies between the two data sets with the related data revealing greater signals. Four is zero percent type of the highest pulse. Zero crossing time is generally shorter in the radiated data than in the conducted data. This implies variation in how long it takes the signal to return to baseline following its peak amplitude. Lastly, a half foot width with its 50% of peak. In comparison to conducted data, the half foot widths of radiated data are typically wider. This shows variation in the amount of time the signal remains at or above half of its maximum strength. In conclusion, interference and disturbance in electronic systems can be caused by both conducted and radiated emissions. In order to minimize harmful emissions and guarantee compliance with regulatory standards, manufacturers must ensure that their devices are designed with appropriate shielding and filtering methods. To lessen the effect of the MI on their systems, users should also adhere to best practice for isolation and grounding.